Well, they've finally done it. The Call of Duty team finally acknowledged the matchmaking systems at hand, going in depth a bit with the criteria for matchmaking, the parameters and all. So today we're breaking it down. Drop your thoughts as we go along, drop a like and consider subscribing for more Modern Warfare 3, Warzone and other FPS content. I'd love to have you. Finally, check out the Twitch link down there in the description below. We'll be live more and upcoming now, but Anyways, let's jump into it. So first, let's run this down. There's going to be a lot of reading here, so do bear with me. This comes directly from the blog post posted by the Activision and Call of Duty teams over on their website. At the very beginning, it says the Call of Duty multiplayer matchmaking is composed of many factors. Number one, connection. As the community will attest, ping is king. Connection is the most critical and heavily weighted factor in the matchmaking process. Number two, time to match. This factor is the second most critical to the matchmaking process. We all want to spend time playing the game rather than waiting for matches to start. And then they said that number three those factors come down to a subset of them playlist diversity meaning the number of playlists available for a player to choose from recent maps and modes considering maps that you've recently played on as well as your mode preferences editable in the quick play settings skill and performance this is used to give our players a global community with a wide skill range the opportunity to have an impact in every match input device controller or mouse and keyboard platform the device pc or console and voice chat enabled or disabled which is a weird one i think to have in the matchmaking factors but anyways they said every time a player begins match making in multiplayer, for example, the process needs to work through all these factors to find other players to quickly assemble a lobby that is stable and competitive. These factors have resulted in a process that we believe provides the best player experience and creates a stronger community for Call of Duty worldwide. Going a little further in depth into the connection portion of it, they said Call of Duty's matchmaking process evaluates a metric we call Delta Ping, which is the difference in the round trip of time between the data in your best data center and the data center onto which your lobby has been placed. To reiterate, we almost always try to maximize the times we place players in data centers that are closest to them. On the match time frame topic, they said if the wait time in a lobby is excessively long, players typically recycle the process by canceling out of matchmaking searches and restarting it, or even quitting the game altogether. This does not quicken the matchmaking process and in fact can be detrimental. Where they gave an example of like if you try and lobby queue for shipment in the Rustment 24-7 playlist, the combination of the two, you're only going to create more open spots by backing out of those Rust lobbies that you may have if you're looking specifically for shipment. Now, I think that can be easily countered by just simply having a 24-7 playlist for both. They're both going to end up having players in it, but we'll save opinions here for a little later in the video. Let's just talk about what they stated firstly. Then, and probably the most important portion of this for what people are expecting, is the measuring skill for matchmaking segment. They said skill is determined based on a player's overall performance in kills, deaths, wins, losses, and more, including mode selection. And recent matches is an overall metric across all of the multiplayer experience. This is a fluid measurement that's consistently updated and reacting to your gameplay. Skill is not only a factor in matchmaking players against appropriate enemies, but also in finding teammates. They use the player performance to ensure the disparity between the most skilled player in the lobby and the least skilled player in the lobby isn't so vast that players feel their match is a waste of time. Our data on player outcomes clearly indicates the inclusion of skill in multiplayer increases the variety of outcomes experienced by players of all skill levels. In other words, all players are more likely to experience wins and losses more proportionately. Our data shows that when lower skilled players are consistently on the losing end, they are likely to quit matches in progress or stop playing altogether. This has an effect on the player pool. A smaller player pool means the wait times for matches increases and connections may not be as strong as they should be. This can compound over time to create a spiral effect. Eventually, when only high skilled players remain because the lower skilled players have quit out of frustration, the result is an ecosystem that is worse overall for everyone. Game data indicates that having some limitations on disparity across skill levels is healthier for the ecosystem. System. We also understand that many high skilled players want more variety of experience, but often feel they only get the sweatiest of lobbies. We've heard this feedback clearly and will continue to test and more actively explore ways to mitigate this concern. So again, we'll come back to that in a second, but then they also answered a few questions in a sort of Q&A portion of this blog, where some of the important ones I think are, does the Call of Duty matchmaking process impact any in-game elements such as hit registry, player visibility, aim assist, damage, etc. To which they answered, no, our matchmaking process does not impact gameplay elements. Which I know that's a tinfoil hat theory that's been going on for ages. There have been patents for the PVE elements of things like that. And honestly, playing in those higher skill brackets for years on end now, I don't personally think it's anything of that. I think that honestly, just the net code and hit detection overall is just shit to begin with. Like, I kind of feel like giving credibility to a different theory gives the matchmaking system too much credit. I think it's just genuinely awful. But they stated that was one of the questions that they answered. One of the questions was, does spending money on Call of Duty content such as bundles, battle pass, or 
of Black Cell. Change how players are matched, to which they said no money spent does not in any way, shape, or form factor into matchmaking. So save that money if you don't like anything in the store or you don't like any of the battle pass, don't buy it. It's not going to impact anything. And probably one of the biggest ones that I think they answered here out of this was, have you ever tested removing skill as a consideration for matchmaking? To which they said, we have run tests over the years to determine if removing skill as a consideration for matchmaking makes sense. We will continue to launch these tests periodically, but to date, the data remains consistent with what we detailed above. Players tend to quit matches or stop playing if they're getting blown out, resulting in negative overall experiences for all players in the lobby and the general player population. We purposefully do not disclose when these tests occur because it may impact feedback or the data we do see during these tests. And then they also followed up with, have you ever considered removing skill for matchmaking in specific general multiplayer game modes? To which the answer was, we have considered this in the past and we will continue to examine this if the idea makes sense as a part of experimental playlists or in specific modes. We have nothing to announce on that front today. So a lot to digest here with this, but honestly, when I look at this kind of stuff, of course, the key factors discussed, connection, time to match, playlist diversity, skill performance, recent maps and modes, input devices, platforms, voice chat. Now, I want to say all of this, again, is in genuine nature, but I'm a cynic here based off the last couple of years. I think that a lot of this is probably PRified, a more positive sounding twist on it in the reality. Again, maybe I'm just a cynic, but realistically, when you look at this, it's kind of a nothing burger. It's kind of something that when you read this, you're like, well, I, I already knew that. That was already the general sentiment of everything that we talked about. And it's really just them acknowledging it, which again, kudos to them for the first time in four years coming out and talking about it. But again, it doesn't change really anything. I don't get from the wording that too much is really ever going to change with this. And frankly, I didn't really expect it. I mean, the mention of testing things out in experimental playlists and LTMs, it's definitely nice to see in writing. And I'm a still firm believer that things like in Warzone LTMs, there's definitely less in skill restrictions on that. And at least some of those, maybe not all, but I definitely feel I've noticed it more in Warzone, which by the way, this matchmaking thing was for multiplayer only. They said they'll talk more about ranked and Warzone in a future update here at this. But when you come to things like we've heard the feedback clearly in will continue to test and actively explore ways to mitigate this concern for that top echelon of players that feel they only have the sweatiest of lobbies. That's just one of those things that I feel like is just, hey, we hear you, but no specifics are given ETA. I'm not expecting anything to be done here at this. And when they word it as such in the blog post, talking about how it is meant to protect those lower skilled players, that's again what we've talked about for the last four years since this was introduced. So I am not expecting anything to change. I understand that from a business side, you want more player retention. You want to keep that player base as much as possible. But on the same time, from a player perspective, especially one in the upper percentages of stuff, you can easily do that, I feel, with just at least loosening those restrictions. You don't have to keep the top 1% in together all at once. You can extend that to top five, top 10%, because a lot of the top 10 still is not that crazy of disparity in regards to it, but it loosens it enough that you won't feel suffocated by every single match as a ranked play match or something like that. So we finally got our clarity here on the matchmaking systems at hand for Modern Warfare 3 in the last couple of years of COD. But again, this blog's exactly what I expected, frankly. A mention of it, but all things we kind of already knew. And to me, it's just kind of they're doubling down on it. And I mean, hey, apparently it works for them. I wasn't expecting it to change. And I've kind of come to terms already that I'm just not going to ever really be able to enjoy solo COD like I could back in as recently Black Ops 4 when the matchmaking system wasn't as sort of hard focused on player retention. I don't need to stomp every single lobby, but I also don't want to sweat every single lobby either, which again, I'm kind of just like reiterating their points here at this point. But anyways, yeah, it's a blog. We got it. Do I wish there was some sort of massive announcement here that they were changing things as opposed to what we got? Sure, but again, I really wasn't expecting that. So I don't know if it's this curse of being a skeptic or like having the realistic approach to things. But when I saw this and read it and I was like, well, glad I didn't get my hopes up too much for this one. But anyways, that's where we're at. So let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of what they stated here on matchmaking? Do you agree that this is basically a nothing burger, that it's basically what we knew of before? Do you like that they were at least transparent on it? Do you like that they at least talked about it? What are the case dropper thoughts? But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, other FPS content. I'd love to have you in the channel. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.